Hi there. Today's lesson is going to talk about extrema and end behavior in functions. So we're following lesson two, three out of our textbook. So the first vocabulary that we're going to talk about is what end behavior actually is. So when we talk about end behavior in our graphs, what we're concerned with is what is happening at the ends of our graph to the left and to the far right of our function. Okay, so things will happen in the middle that we're going to talk about shortly, but what we're concerned with is what is happening as we move towards the ends of our graph. Now we understand that our graph moves in two directions, or our function. It moves horizontally, which are our x values, and it moves vertically, which are our y values. So we are concerned with what, where our function is headed, the value of that function being our y values towards the end. So we're going to give it us some direction and how to go. So as we move to the left, what I'm going to say here is as our function moves to the left, now mathematically to the left is going towards negative infinity. As our graph moves towards the left, the function, now that's going to be our curve or our lines, the function is going downward to the left. So as our function is approaching the left, the actual function is approaching negative infinity. It's going downward. Okay, so that's two directions. As we go to the left, our function is going down. Now I want to investigate what's happening on the right side. So as we move to the right of our function, so that means mathematically as x is approaching positive infinity, that just is the mathematical way to say to the right, the function is approaching. So I look at the direction of where my graph is headed, and in this case it's headed up. So it's going to be headed towards positive infinity. So as we move to the right-handed side, our function is moving up. That's telling me what the end behavior of the function is. So let's look at a few examples. So here is a linear graph. And again, I'm going to start my end behavior the same way every time. I'm concerned with where the function goes as we move to negative infinity. That's the question I'm asking. And I'm also concerned with where is the function headed as we move to positive infinity. So I'll probably start my functions like this every time. Now, your textbook tends to start with the function. I always start with the x, because when we plot our ordered pairs, we always start x first, y second. All right, so let's investigate. So mathematically, this says as x approaches negative infinity, that means to the left. So as I go to the left, this function is going down. So I'm going to erase this question mark, and I'm going to replace that question mark with a negative infinity. So as we go to the left, the function is going down. As, I go to, as x approaches negative infinity, the function approaches negative infinity. All right, so let's look at the right-hand side of the graph. As I look to the right of the graph, and I can't see too much to the right because it shoots up pretty fast, so as we go to the right or towards positive infinity, the function is approaching. So is it going up or down is the question. In this case, it's going up, so it's going towards positive infinity. So this is our end behavior of this linear function. You can see that as I go to the left, we're going down. As I go to the right, we're going up. All right, our next example. Now this is our constant function. So what is true about a constant function is that my function constantly, the entire way, is going to equal negative 1.5. So when I start my end behavior, I always again start as x approaches negative infinity. So as we move to the left of my graph, this time my function is not going toward down or it's not going up. 
it's remaining constant. So my function is staying constant at negative 1.5. Now this doesn't happen very often, but it does happen on constant functions or if a graph would have a horizontal asymptote attached to it. All right, so let's see what's happening at the right-handed side. So as we move to the right, as x approaches positive infinity, we move to the right, the function again is still remaining constant at negative one and a half. So to the left and to the right, it's actually approaching the same value. That is our end behavior. All right, our third example, describe the end behavior of this function. So this is a nonlinear function. This is a polynomial that gives us these curves in our function, but I'm gonna approach it the same way. As x approaches negative infinity, so as we go to the left, the function, that's where the curve is headed, is going down. So it's going to negative infinity. As our function goes to the right, to positive infinity, the function is approaching positive infinity as well because it's going up. So as we approach negative infinity, or as x approaches negative infinity, our function goes down. As we go to positive infinity, our function goes up, and this is our end behavior. So we have one more graph. It says describe the end behavior of each nonlinear function. So this is a polynomial function as well, but it's going in the same direction. So notice that the difference here is this function was ending in different directions. This function is ending in the same direction. So as we move to the left, as x approaches negative infinity, my function is going down. And as we approach positive infinity to the right, my function is also going down. So in this case, the ends of both of my sides are both approaching negative infinity. And that's my end behavior. All right, so another part of the function that is important and gives important information are called the extrema functions. You might also see them called the turning points of a function. So we have two different kinds of extrema functions. We have maximums and we have minimums. All right, now we're specifically going to talk about what's called the relative maximum and minimums in the graphs today. There are also absolutes which reach your highest peaks in the whole entire function, but we're just concerned with relative today. So relative maximum is the highest y values of any nearby points. It might not be the highest y value in a function, but it's the highest in, the, in terms of what is around it. All right, so you're looking for the peaks of the mountains if you look at it as a mountain range. So this is the graph increases to the maximum and decreases after it. So when I look for the peaks of the mountains, there's a peak and there's a peak. Those reach relative maximum points. They're relative maximum because if I plot those peaks, all points around it are lower. And as the definition reads, as we increase to the point, we hit the point, so our graph increases to the maximum and it decreases afterwards. It increases to the maximum and it decreases afterwards. So these values here are called the relative maximum. So if I have to list those values, I'm going to go on the x, one, two, three, oh, about three and a quarter to the left. So you're going to have a relative minimum at negative three and a quarter, and it goes all the way up to one, two, three, four, five. And you're also going to have a relative max at about zero, three. And that's just a rough estimate of where those points are located. Those are, whoops, I wrote minimum, but those are actually our maximums. So our relative minimums are the exact opposite of that. 
So a relative minimum has the lowest point. So it's like the dip in a valley, if you think of a valley. So our lowest points would be located here and here. Now you can see this one is much lower than this one. That's why they're called relative because it's just the lowest point of the points around it. So when I grab those points, here's a minimum and here's a minimum. And by definition, it says the graph decreases to the minimum and increases after the minimum. So as we're coming to that point, we're decreasing and then it starts to increase. So that's why it's called a turning point because it turns from decrease to increase, from decrease to increase. So if I had to list now the relative minimum values, the first one would be located at about negative one and a half and goes up about one and three quarters. And then the second one we can say goes to about two and a quarter and comes down to two. And those are our relative minimum values. The last important value that we're going to talk about today are called the zeros of the function. Now these are very easy to find when you're looking at a graph. The zeros of the function are the values on the graph where the function is equal to zero. So we're looking for the values on the x-axis where you hit because at that point the function is equal to zero. So this function specifically has three zeros and the three zeros are going to be approximately one, two, three, four. So that would be a negative four. And the ordered pair would be negative four, zero. That's what makes it the zeros. But I'm just going to list the x values. The second one would be about one and a half. That's going to be an estimate. And the third one is located at three. So we have three zeros of the function located at negative four, at approximately one and a half, and at three. If I'm not sure where this guy here is located, but I'm not exactly sure that he's at one and a half, I can also give his value between two integers. We can say that that zero of the function happens somewhere between one and two. If I know that it's closer to one and a half, I can use that approximation. Okay, so let's look at this polynomial function. It says find any extrema values. Those extrema values, remember, are our mins and our maxes, and find the zeros. So I'm gonna find the mins and maxes first. So I'm looking for the lowest points in my graph, and I'm looking for the highest points in my graph. So I can see here's a low and here's a high. So I have a relative minimum approximately at we'll say negative one and a quarter and that one goes to negative one and it looks like that relative maximum happens right at the origin so that would be the point zero zero all right now i'm looking for the zeros of the function so i'm looking for where does this function cross the x-axis so the zeros of the function are going to be located at approximately negative two and zero. Okay, so looking at this one last graph, I know this one is a little bit fuzzy, but this is talking about um, Frederica's savings account over a year. So it says use the table to graph and estimate the extrema for this function, then explain the extrema in the context of the situation. So you can see here in month one, so that would be in January, she had $1,100. In month two, she had $1,200. Month three, $1,300, and so on. So then we took these balances and mapped it out on a graph. All right, now the function is asked, or the problem is asking for the relative minima and maxima because it's asking for the extrema. Okay, so I'm looking for those peaks and valleys. So I can see that we're increasing, increasing, increasing. Now she flattened off here. She didn't put anything in. She didn't take anything out. And then she increased after there. And then there was a drop. Soon as there's a drop, 
that becomes a maximum. She went from increasing to decreasing. So when does that happen? So if you can look at these y values, 11, 12, 13, 13, 14, then there's a drop. So that's happening in the fifth month or May. So that would be a relative maximum she hits in May. All right, then she goes down and then jumps right back up the following two months. So that's going to create a relative minima. So you can see 14, 1200, so she's not down long and she starts jumping right back up. So in June, she had a relative minimum value. As she's going up, up, she reaches a peak and she starts to drop back down. So you can see 1200, 1300, 1400 is a peak and she stops, starts to drop from there. So that's in the eighth month. So she's going to have a relative maximum at, in August. And then she has one more dip all the way down, and then she comes back up from there. So that seems to be happening in September. She goes down to 900 and jumps right back up to 1,000. So she's going to have a relative minimum in September as well. All right, so that's using this relative minimum and maximum idea to find our extreme values in a function where we're looking at someone's bank account. Okay, so just to recap what we talked about today, we talked about the end behaviors, so what is happening at the ends of our graph, and we also talked about our extreme values, so those are going to be our peaks in our valleys in our function. And the last concept we talked about were zeros. Check for your assignment on Google Classroom. I hope you all have a wonderful day.